So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Actually, we like saying, God must fight for me. But there is a place for you to fight. There is a place for you to fight the good fight. Remember, God would tell David, I have already, I will give you the land. I will give them to you. You will win, but go and fight. There is a place for us to war against some powers of darkness. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. What a wonderful day that we have again to come and share the word of God. This is the Marvelous Believers Show. I am Lucy Lepore and I am as usual very delighted that we are here again to share the word of God. Let me thank each one of you for finding time to tune in and to join us and to give us fellowship even as we share this word. And I know the word of God is going to build us, is, has been transforming us, has been building us up, and we are never the same. Our lives cannot remain the same even as we continue fellowshipping uh, in the word of God. So to, again today I want to share with you a quick word of God that um, has encouraged me uh, of late and uh, I felt I could share with you. So let's pray together as we go into the word of God. Father, we thank you because of your word. We thank you because your word is able to encourage us, to transform us, is able to create even things in our lives. And even as we share tonight, we know that you will teach us, you will speak to us, and something new will just begin, even a new mindset, a new encouragement for the glory and honor of your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once again, welcome as we share the word of God. Uh, let's be interactive. You can tell us where you are watching us from, from the chat section, and we shall be excited to know that you are with us. Glory be to Jesus. And today I am, I am sharing a very interesting uh, topic, something that maybe we talk a lot about, something that we speak a lot about and maybe we can just learn one or two things about uh, spiritual warfare or about warfare the good actually i titled it the good fight maybe why we need to just know why paul called it a good fight why would it be called a good fight because um fights are not usually very good but paul said fight the good fight so let's talk about it even as uh, the Lord shall help us. As we begin, I want to put a disclaimer because Paul helped us in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. He said we are not fighting against flesh and blood. So even as we talk about fighting, it's not the fight that we grew up knowing or we know even up to now. When we talk about fighting, the first thing that comes in our mind is people that are exchanging and seeing who is stronger than the other. But Paul says we do not fight against flesh and blood. Actually, he says we fight against principalities and powers and rulers. You know, he talks about what we are fighting about. Powers and uh, rulers of darkness and spiritual hosts. Those are the things we are not actually fighting with anyone. We are not even fighting with our enemies. We are fighting powers and principalities and rulers of darkness. But there is one thing that must encourage us, even as we go into talking about fighting the good fight, even as we talk about spiritual warfare. Remember the words of Jesus, I have given you power and authority. I have empowered you. I have given you dominion. There is no, nothing that shall in any way harm you. One time in our previous shows, I remember we were being taught about uh, the power that we have been given as the marvelous believers. And I remember Pastor Ben Isaac saying, it does not matter the rank. Now, Paul has put it, uh, has told us we are fighting against principalities and the powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual hosts. But I remember even as we were learning that it does not matter, is it the principality, is it the rulers of spirituals, is it the, the kind of, it doesn't matter the kind of demon. Jesus said, you will cast out demons, whatever rank it is, whatever manner of demon it is, whatever size, whatever color, 
you will cast out demons. You will lay your hands on the sick and the demon of sickness will go. That is the power we have been given. So even as we talk about fighting, I want us to remember it is a good fight. And I want to, to talk about it. Why is it called a good fight? Why are we engaged in a good fight? Why do we even need to fight anyway? Praise be to Jesus. Now, it is a good fight because it's not a 50-50 you are not fighting with a probability of winning or losing. No. We are fighting and we are fighting from a winning and we are actually like act, reacting. It's like watching a match and you know you ever, you got the results anyway. You know the team that won anyway, but you are watching and you know how it will end. We are fighting a good fight because we know our victory has been already given. We know that we already have victory. We are not fighting and there is a probability of maybe death. A fight can result to death. A fight can result maybe to loss. A fight maybe can even result to shame. The fight I am talking about, the fight we are in as the marvelous believers, is not a fight that can even live alone death and loss, not even shame. Praise be to Jesus. We are not in a battle that can lead to shame. We shall not suffer shame. Buana as praise be to Jesus. So I want us to look at a few scriptures that will help us to understand what I'm talking about. One of them is... Um, that we were predestined. The Bible talks about those that he predestined, he also called. From before the foundations of the earth, Christ or God had already predestined us. And so there are things that whatever it is, our whole life, our whole life from the time you were born, is just a rehearsal, it's just a reacting of what God has already predestined. You are actually walking in a life that has already been predestined. You are not chancing life. You are not struggling to make life. You are not f on your own finding out what to do tomorrow. Your life has been so pre-planned and predestined by God. That is why even when we talk about meeting and fighting battles, they are not battles that you just um, met and you don't know what to do. Your life is already on a lane. The Bible, David uh, said he has removed me from the malikli and set my feet upon a rock set my feet on a firm foundation i am not chancing i am not walking like i could slide and fall i am on a firm foundation praise be to jesus let me read this um, from the book of john chapter 17 john 17 hallelujah we give god all the glory maya rabaka sayanda John 17 and verse 24. Jesus says, it was Jesus who was praying and he was saying, Father, I desire that they also, they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you loved, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. So Jesus was praying for us. And he was saying that we may, he was saying from the foundation of the world, God had loved him and given us to him. So as we walk through life, we are not walking like people who could get lost. We were given already to Jesus, even from the foundations of the earth. We are not about to lose. Last week we were talking about sonship. And we were saying we've been included in the family of God. We have become sons and heirs of the kingdom. So we are not in a battle that could actually deny you your, your right as a son. That is why it's a good fight. It is not a fight that is about to dislodge you from the family of God. Praise Jesus. Let me also read Ephesians chapter 4. Maybe just to, to talk about this predestination. Ephesians no, chapter 1 from verse 4. The Bible says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. I believe this is one of the scriptures actually we read last week, that we were already predestined for adoption. Even from the foundations of the earth, we've already been made, we were already planned for. 
When you became a child of God, you only walked into your destiny. When you accepted Jesus in your life, you only walked into your destiny. Otherwise, it was already there. Christ had already died. Christ had already chosen you. Christ had already given his life for you. It is only when you allowed him into your life that you just entered into the parts of destiny. So this life has been predestined. So even if we are talking about fighting, we are not fighting a losing battle. Praise Jesus. We are fighting a good fight. And let us look at what exactly is this good fight that we are talking about. Now, I want to, to first mention that... Uh, the Old Testament, I want to refer to the Old Testament so that it helps us to understand what I'm talking about. The Old Testament, we know that it was a shadow of the New Covenant. Everything that was happening in the Old Testament was a shadow of the New Covenant that we are in. And the reign, and, um, the, the reign or the era of David when he was the king actually was uh, the whole period of David's era was a shadow of the time we are living in. We are living in a, a reality of a shadow that was already reacted during the time of David. And we know the time of David. David was actually a man after God's own heart. That is God's confession about David. And that is why we have the marvelous believers now. That is why we have people like you and me, people that have have loved God, people that have understood the love of God, people that God can testify, this is my supermodel, this is the person, this is my splendor, this is my show of what grace can do in the lives of men. David was a man after God's own heart. But we see the reign of David was characterized with a lot of battles that he went, he fought the Philistines, he fought the Ammonites, he fought the Jebusites, he fought the Syrians, David fought the Ammonites, he fought so many people and actually won. So his era, his period of reign was characterized by so many battles, but there were battles that he won. So there is a scripture I would want to read for us that, that talks about, uh, let me read it, Chronicles, First Chronicles, First Chronicles, um, Chapter 28, verse 3. Verse 3 says, but God said to me, um, okay, before I go to, to, maybe before I go to the Chronicles, let me read First Samuel. I wanted First Samuel first, so that we see that David used to inquire of the Lord. First Samuel chapter 23, verse 4 and 5. Then David the Bible says, Then David inquired of the Lord once again, and the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go to Keila, for I will deliver the Philistines into your hand. That was God, uh, David inquiring of the Lord, Should I go to fight? That was his nature. That was his usual. He would always go and ask the Lord, Should I go to fight? And God would tell him, Yes, go, and you will win. In chapter 30 of the same first Samuel, let me just read it, chapter 30 and verse 8, we see again David asking. So David inquired of the Lord saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. David used to go to battles, but he would inquire of the Lord. And the Lord would tell him, Go and fight because I will deliver them in your hands. God never told him, Don't fight. God never told him, Just stay where you are. They will all just die somehow and you occupy the land. God never told him, I have already fought these battles for you. Just relax the land. I promised you the land of milk and honey. The problem we've had sometimes is because we have decided to, it is the will of God, so let God fight. It is God who is fighting for me. Actually, we like saying God must fight for me. But there is a place for you to fight. There is a place for you. To fight the good fight. Remember God would tell David. I have already. I will give you the land. I will give them to you. You will win. But go and fight. There is a place for us to war. Against some powers of darkness. There is a place for you to go out there. And defend something. And war against something. It is not enough. We can't just sit and say. Because it's the will of God. Uh, it will happen. We can't just sit and say. Uh, God will fight for me. There is a place 
even as marvelous believers, for us to go out there and do something and fight for something. And that's why I'm talking about the good fight. Remember, I'm talking about a fight that is already won, a fight that we know is not, I'm not giving you an uh, a probability of you could lose, you could suffer loss, you could suffer shame. I'm giving you uh, an idea of we need to go and defend something, but it's a battle that has been won, but there's a place for us, praise Jesus. So uh, the, the, the verse I wanted to read in First Chronicles, uh, it is uh, chapter 28, verses 3. This is now a time when David wanted to build the temple, but God said to me, you shall not build the house for my name because you have been a, mad, a man of war and have shed blood. And then in verse 6, he says, Now he said to me, Your son Solomon shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son and I'll be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever. Now, the reign of Solomon came after David, and that's a shadow of the millennial reign of Christ that is coming for Christ and the church. That will be a time of peace. There will never be war. You will never need spiritual warfare. You will never need to bind and to lose. There will be the devil will be chained. This is the reign that was like a type of, or the, that is a shadow of Solomon's time. The millennial reign of Christ that is coming for us to reign with Christ. But uh, while we are here in this era, in this time, we are in a, a time like the time of David. There is a part where we need to go out there. We need to defend. We need to fight. But it is a good fight. And so let me talk about this good fight now. I will read what I would call my verse for the day or my main script for the day, which is First uh, Timothy chapter 1. Chapter one. Hallelujah. Kariba rakatayanda. Maka soto riku basaya. First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18. Paul is talking to Timothy. Actually the heading in New King James Version says fight the good fight. Paul was encouraging Timothy. Paul was a man, a preacher of grace. Paul knew the grace of God was enough. But he was telling Timothy there is a part that I expect you to arise and fight for. And that's what we are talking about today. Arise and fight the good fight. So Paul tells Timothy in uh, verse 18 of First Timothy chapter 1. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. This is the spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is not just fighting demons left, right, imaginary and imagined. Spiritual warfare is when you know you are fighting a good fight. When you know you are not fighting because the devil is your equal, he is not. When you know you are not fighting because you think the demons are overpowering you, they cannot. We, we are given power and authority and dominion over demons. They cannot overpower you. Good fight is when you know what you are, fight, you are defending. And the Paul tells Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. Let me read it in. Passion translation. He has elaborated it even further. Passion translation says, So Timothy, my son, I am entrusting you with this responsibility in keeping with the very first prophecies that were spoken over your life and are now in the process of fulfillment in this great work of ministry, in keeping with the prophecies spoken over you. With this encouragement, use your prophecies as weapons as you wage spiritual warfare by faith and with a clean conscience. Use those prophecies as weapons of, of warfare. Now, um, uh, why I read this is why I read it in uh, Passion Translation is because there is a part that is talking about those prophecies that were spoken over your life and they are in the process of fulfillment. Now, our life is actually prophetic. Like I said, our life was already predestined before the foundation of the earth. The will of God for our life is already known to us. Whether someone prophesied it to you or not, you know that the word of God has taught you. 
the will of God concerning your life is already spoken through the word of God. It is the will of God that you prosper. It is the will of God that you walk in good health. It is the will of God that you live in joy and, and peace. All these things are written in the word of God. So our life is already a prophetic life. It's already been prophesied. But even apart from that, we have uh, many of us, I'm sure, that have received prophetic words from people. Now, what happens is the reason Paul was telling Timothy that according to the prophecies given to you is because he understood that immediately a prophetic word is given to you. The devil rises or he organizes demons to fight that word. Any word that is spoken to you. There has been millions of demons that have been set and strategized to fight that word not to manifest, not to be fulfilled. How many times have you been receiving prophecies and it's one year, two years, three years, and this thing is not coming to pass? That's why Paul was telling Timothy, spiritual warfare is defending or warring for that. You go to war for that prophetic utterance. You war for that prophecy to actualize, to become... Um, present the reality to materialize to become real in your life once a prophecy has been released into your life you now need to work for it you now need to declare it you now need to go into spiritual warfare and fight anything that is coming to divert it remember the devil comes to steal to kill and to destroy any word of prophecy that has been spoken in your life he will come to steal it he will want to come and destroy it he will want to come and divert it. That is why we need to war for the prophecies. And like I have said, some prophecies may have been spoken, but some may even, uh, maybe not spoken. Maybe not someone has not yet come to speak them in your life, but we have the word of God. The word of God has spoken to us. I know what God wants with my life. I know it is not in his will that I should be sick. I know the Bible has told me by his stripes I was, will, I was healed. The will of God concerning my life is I walk in good health. The will of God concerning my life is that I live a, a life that is comfortable. It's not poverty and lack. I know the will of God, whether someone has prophesied it or not. But now I understand that the devil comes to fight those prophecies. He comes to make sure they do not actualize. He comes to make sure that he diverts them. The devil can see even in the spirit and he knows that you have been set on, you have been predestined on a path of a glorious future and he comes to disturb it. And that's where we come in with spiritual warfare. That's where we come in with a good fight. Paul tells Timothy, according to those uh, prophecies that are still in the process of fulfillment, that are still in the process of fulfillment in your life, you need to war for them. You need to defend them. You need to enter into warfare so that they actualize. You bring it to manifest in the present life. Praise be to Jesus. And that is spiritual warfare. And so we need to, to know that. We need to, 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 to know how to fight. We are not just binding. We are defending. You, you, go to, to, you go to pray and you talk about the prophecies that you know concerning your life. You declare them. You announce them. You command them to manifest. Hallelujah. You command them. You say it is the will of God that I should not suffer loss. That I should not suffer loss. And so you business that is going down. I command you to come back. I command you to make profit. It is the will of God that I should succeed. Those demons that are coming to bring down my business. I rebuke you. I destroy your power. You are in a spiritual warfare. And you are in a winning side. That is the beauty of it. Uh, maybe um, there is a scripture, maybe we can finish with it. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Kariba soroko toyanda. Mante rebo shikibira kataya. Maraka suri katayanda. Reba koso torikayanda. The Bible says from verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. 
and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We don't fight like the world would fight. You may see uh, something that is happening around your life, maybe around your family. You'd want to fight it the way everybody else would fight. But Paul, the Bible helps us to understand our weapons are not carnal. When I know the will of God concerning my family, it is possible for me to see something that is interrupting with that will. I don't have to fight physically. I know my weapons are not carnal. Spiritual warfare, we do not fight. And so we go in. With their, and, and Paul says, those weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty in God. Praise be to Jesus. And I'm interested with, okay, he has said they are mighty for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing down every thought into captivity. Today I felt like... Uh, I felt like uh, concentrating on that part of bringing down every thought into captivity because sometimes our battles are just in our mind. Sometimes we are, we, are, we are defeating ourselves right in our mind because of the things that we know, because of the things. Fear comes in because you know one or two things. Reality looks like um, what you see with your five senses looks like the reality, looks like the the actual thing and so fear creeps in and so doubt starts coming but paul tells us our weapons are not carnal they are mighty even to bring into captivity those imaginations those fears those things that are so evident with your five senses it is possible to bring them to captivity that is spiritual warfare to tell your mind it doesn't matter what i know and what i am seeing i am declaring the will of god concerning my life praise be to jesus and so today as we end i just want us to to, to declare those things, the things that you know have been spoken in your life. There is power, the prophecies that have been spoken. Remember when Jesus, I was just thinking about the power of the word of prophecy. It is just the word of prophecy that prophesied Jesus' birth. An angel came and told Mary, behold, you shall be with a child. And Jesus was born. That is how powerful a word of prophecy is. A word of prophecy came to Zachariah and prophesied the birth of John the Baptist, and it became those words that have been spoken to us. A word of prophecy was spoken to the dry bones, and they were able to arise. Words that have been spoken to you, I want you to defend them. I want you to war for them. I want you to declare them until they manifest in this present life. They actualize in your life. There is power. Even those that have not been spoken Remember, the Bible itself is a prophetic word for you. The book of Joel, chapter 2, Joel was prophesying about these days. And he was saying, you are, the young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, people shall prophesy. Those words God was speaking through the prophet uh, Joel, in the book of Joel, he was prophesying about this time. That during our time, people shall prophesy, people shall see visions. You have a vision, you have a dream. Old men shall dream dreams. You have a dream. War for it. Engage warfare for it. By declaring it. By defending it. By declaring it, it comes to pass. You wake up every morning and you say, this is my vision. I declare it, it comes to pass. It shall be in the name of Jesus. Those words that have been spoken in your life. Someone came and prophesied, probably you will be married. It's been three years. The minute those words left, sometimes when those things happen, we now come back to our comfort zone and we say, I think that prophet was not accurate. Or I think that was a fake prophet. The things they said did not. The minute the prophet declared, uttered them, millions of demons started organizing themselves. How can this not happen? But I came to encourage you now. Declare warfare for your prophecy. War for it. Defend it in prayer. Defend it in spiritual warfare. Someone prophesied your marriage will be blessed. Why is it not blessed? Someone prophesied uh, you'll be blessed with the fruit of the womb. Someone prophesied this project you have started shall succeed. All those prophecies we are correct. All those prophecies we know they are according to the will of God. Someone prophesied Maybe you have a ministry in your life. God has called you to serve him in this area and this area. Those things, let's war for them. That is spiritual warfare. 
That is what God has, that is the part that God has left us to do. Yes, he declared it and we know it is his will, but we have a devil that can never sit down. And so our part as the marvelous believer is to war for the prophecies. Praise be to Jesus. Remember the time of David, every battle he went to, he won because we are not fighting a losing battle. We are fighting a battle because we are walking in the path of destiny. It's already been predestined. We cannot lose. We are victorious and we are marvelous. I want to stop there and just make a prayer for us. But even as we continue, I want you to, co to make it your habit. Wake up and pray and declare the things that you know is the will of God concerning your life. In Jesus' name, let's pray together as we end. Hallelujah. We bless you, King of glory, because of your word. Because we know your word has the grace and the power even to perform. And so I thank you for every word of prophecy that has been spoken in our lives. I thank you for every vision and every dream that you have given us. I thank you for every revelation of your word that you have given us concerning our lives. Because we declare in the name of Jesus, it manifests in this present world. It actualizes in our lives in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are blessed. This is the Marvelous Believers Show. You are marvelous. Remember to share this link with a friend. And let's meet again next week. Amen. Amen.